obviously, we have a, uh, a new truck. And also, we have a new dog. Dooley. These, these are related because uh, <laughs> whenever I bought the truck, it came with a dog. So this is Dooley, it's spelled D-O-O-L-E-Y, and he is Adorable. our new puppy. So welcome into the GFP family. He's Blue Healer and also part kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to jump. Say hello. What is in your mouth? What the? He's a puppy. He's nine weeks old, so in dog years, that's terrible twos, I think. He sleeps half the time as well, so he's not that bad. Anyway, here's my new truck. Also, long story short, I have never had a Duramax in my life, ever. Almost, a couple times. Logan and Brandon had that green LOI with the Z06. I love that truck. Ever since that truck, and ever since Nick bought his white Duramax, I've been looking at Duramaxes. I was considering buying a Duramax. I figured I have Chevy cars, so I didn't really need a Chevy truck. And then I found this. Well, actually, I found two Duramax shorties. I'm gonna tell you why I bought this one instead of the other one. Two main reasons. One, everybody always says that I just buy like already built trucks, which is true. I'm very impatient. I don't really like to wait on a lot of my trucks. So I have like trucks that I plan on building and then trucks that I plan on keeping like relatively how I bought them, maybe changing a couple things. So there was this truck which needed a little bit of work, but it was cheaper and it came with a dog. I bought this one over the more expensive one that's already done because I was, I was thinking, I was like, man, what would I do to the other truck? Nothing, and that'd be boring. So I bought this one, a 2006 Chevy 2500 HD Duramax. It's a LBZ. It has the Allison transmission, which is good, apparently. I don't know. Like I said, I have never had a Chevy before, so you gotta bear with me. I'm not really, I'm getting to know all this stuff. That's not like a 12 valve. I don't know every single inch of the truck already. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna break stuff and figure out what works and what doesn't work on this truck. It is a shorty. Now, they didn't come like that. Just like all my other shorties, they were custom made. This truck started out as a Chevy 3500 dually. The frame has been chopped. A short bed has been put on it. Whoever did the swap, they, they didn't do bad. They didn't do bad, but um, there's a couple things that I don't like about it. We're at Kohl's right now because this truck uh, didn't come with a hitch receiver. So I put, I uh, Cole put a hitch receiver and hitch plug on it. So then I can tow my Camaro down to Florida this week. Surprise, that's what we're doing. Cole was looking at the wiring and how they did a couple things and they were like, okay, when you get back from Florida, we're gonna take it here. He's gonna go through the whole truck just like he did with Murder M and make it absolutely perfect up to Cole's standards. That, that's what he described it as. Another issue, obviously, is paint. The majority of the truck is really good. Like, when it's clean, like in the video yesterday, mint. But I think whoever did it painted this, the bumper, and painted the hood all at the same time. Because these parts of the truck, the paint is absolutely garbage. Like, the first thing I saw when I went to pick this truck up was the bumper. Like, I've never seen a bumper crack and slake like that. Which, no big deal. I mean, it's literally just paint. I already bought a new bumper. I bought a grill i'm gonna repaint this hood headlights tail lights uh mirrors door handles everything's getting replaced besides like the body the motor and the trans at this point because i haven't blown them up yet it's got a sick ass cow hood freaking love cow hoods cow hoods just make everything better it, it could be missing the whole front end and if it had that cow hood i would be like yeah i'm, I'm good i like it <laughs> prepare yourselves because this is this is a lot to handle under the hood <laughs> is literally a basically bone stock LBZ. It's tuned, got the EGR block off plate, and it's got exhaust. A lot of times when you buy modified trucks, they're beat to crap. This truck is mostly unmolested, so we get to do whatever we want with it. I'm gonna do a high flow piping um, and get it all powder coated a cool color. I might do a big turbo, might do injectors, maybe dual fuelers. Definitely gonna do head studs no matter what I do. Next time we pop the hood on this thing, it's gonna be a freaking show truck on right here. That's what I want. <laughs> Funny story. Cole actually bought Murder Ram off the winner of Murder Ram in the last video. If you haven't checked that out, check that out. I convinced him to let me buy the welds off of Murder Ram, just like my last shorty. This shorty has weld 
off-road wheels. These are like my favorite wheel and tire for a race truck. Like if Cole didn't let me buy them off Murder Ram, I was literally just gonna buy them again. If you can't take a hint, I'm pretty sure we already figured out the powder coat color for this truck, white and purple. Maybe not that purple, maybe a different purple. What do you think? Do you approve? Do you think? No. Oh. He oh. Yes. No. I can't. All right, well, maybe, maybe we'll go back on the dry and break on the purple, but. My other white shorty, the second gen shorty, it's colored for white and purple. And I always like that, but I sold that truck way too soon, so. Uh, it's got leather and it's got like a doubled in. And it's it's pretty clean for the most part. The headliner, it's it this truck came from Missouri, alright? I can see why they would put a Duramax diesel flag. Because you might forget that you're driving a Duramax. But I won't. I have a pretty decent memory. So I'm going to rip this out immediately and um, put in a nice suede headliner. The console is perfect. The dash is perfect. The seats have no tears in them or anything. We're getting new door panels and we're getting a new headliner. For the most part, the interior is not trash, but I'm going to change a couple things. If you notice in the video, some of the body line is like a little off. So the bed definitely has to be adjusted. I'm going down to... T King in Florida, and he is the master of everything that has to do with truck bodies. Like he could literally make your dad's rusted out second gen, the cleanest second gen in the world. So I doubt we'll have any problem lining up the bed. It has track bars already. They are very small and dinky. It has rock lights. Yesterday when we were filming, the switch caught on fire. So there's a short somewhere. So what? I just, yeah, yeah, that happened. So. Uh, I completely disconnected all the rock lights. I'm gonna rip them all out and wire new rock lights in. It does have these wheel lights that are not terrible. They do do the job of wheel lights. I don't know if I'm a fan of the wheel lights yet. They may stay, they may not. A five inch exhaust to this custom tip, which was probably cool at one point. Yeah, I don't, I don't really like it. So we're either gonna do a hood stack, which everybody loves a hood stack, or a bed stack. Haven't had a shorty with a bed stack yet. I've had a shorty with a hood stack, but I haven't had one. That would be one. cool. A bed stack? Mm -hmm. I like bed stacks, they're not bad. Not a lot of people do them anymore. Every single shorty that I've ever had has had a fuel tank inside the bed. I understand like if that's the easiest thing to do, but it's already a shorty. You already don't have any bed space. So to put a fuel tank in the bed means that you have a short, short, short bed. It's got this nice tunnel cover. But these people actually put the fuel tank right where the spare tire would normally be. And then you got this trap door and then bam. Fuel. Fuel tank. <laughs> I like the idea. I don't really like how you have to stick the nozzle all the way down in there to fill up the truck. And then it's like, it like barely works. It was a good idea. Just execution was a little mess. This bed needs bed liner and trap door situation has to be cleaned up. I have a full short bed. That's never happened before. Did you know that Chevy rear ends two inches narrower than the front end from the factory? Whose idea was that? So you need spacers for them to line up, I guess, which is dumb. This little plastic piece is ugly as hell. It is all scratched up. I'm probably gonna get a wing, like a Chevy SS wing or something. Cause it, I mean, it's low and it's, a race truck so it would kind of fit it has a roll pan already and i freaking love roll pans i would literally i would put roll i would put a roll pan on megan if i could i mean i can we might i love roll pans i hate rear bumpers the only thing i would like if it was welded and there was no seam right here so we might do that while we're repainting everything just weld it up real quick but these tail lights they're, they're cool they they have cracks in them so i got new tail lights I've never had a shorty with a hitch either. Most people, when they think shorty, they do not think tow truck. But this truck used to be a 3500, so it has 3500 suspension. So it should tow fine. If not, we're gonna put airbag on it. This is the rite of passage for this shorty. We're going to be putting this shorty to work immediately. Today, we're leaving to go to Florida. Which then, if it can tow a car all the way down to Florida with no problems, We'll know that it has no problems. And if we blow everything up, we know that we gotta fix everything. I like taking new trucks on long road trips immediately when I get them so that I can know exactly what is wrong with it with no questions right away. You should do that too. 
don't do that, actually. Maybe not. Maybe don't do that, but... There she is. For the most part, well, I mean, now. We've only put wheels on it so far. We have had it for, like, three days. So, I love it, personally. I haven't had a Duramax yet, but the power is pretty nuts. Like, it's literally just deleted and tuned. And it freaking rips. It does nasty burnouts. It drifts around semi trucks and almost crashes into a wall. <laughs> Faster than Jackson's truck, which is was a hard pill for him to swallow because he thinks his truck is the fastest truck in the world. <laughs> Love you, Jackson. <laughs> yeah, this thing is nasty. I've seen videos of like the 68 millimeter turbo on an LBZ, and it sounds like a 6.0, and it sounds nuts. But like, even if I don't do that, this truck is more than fast enough. I don't know what the heck we're gonna call this truck yet. I uh, have no idea. Who's a small white person? We could call it Haley. You're tiny. No. And white. We gotta think of a name for this truck. We gotta think of everything that you guys wanna see from this truck. We could do, we could do triple turbos. We could do dual fuelers. We could do triple fuelers. We could do triple built transmissions. We could do freaking. we could do anything. We have endless possibilities with how this truck could go. It is all up to you guys. So let me know what you guys want to see from this truck. I would like to make it simple and clean, but I think I always say I want to make it simple and clean and then it goes off the wall. So we shall see how that goes. I'm going to get loaded down and um, head on to Florida. So in the next video, you guys see us down in Florida. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good night.